going to talk today about the, the Global Business Outlook, which is a survey we do. We've been doing it every quarter for nearly 20 years now. Started in the U.S., and in the, over the last decade, we've added CFOs in Asia, Africa, Europe, and Latin America. So truly global, just like Duke University is, and just like the Fuqua School of Business is. The results are disseminated widely. Um, we've worked with the Federal Reserve Bank, for example, over the last few years, asking questions about if interest rates were to go up by 1% or 2 percentage points, what would happen to the business plans of, for hiring and capital spending, and work with other central banks and economic advisory groups around the world. Results get reported in, in the press. Now, why, why, why does Duke do this? Why does Fuqua um, <laughs> conduct this survey? We look at it as a way to bridge the gap between the ivory tower and the practice of finance. And so this helps us in a number of ways. It helps us identify and get closer to important real world issues you know, that are happening right today. So on the research side, it helps. On the teaching side, it helps us bring current events and issues into the classroom. And it helps in a big way to help us connect around the world with businesses, with prospective students, and with alumni as, as we conduct the, the survey and, and learn about the world. Um, we had 1,000 CFOs respond to the survey last quarter, or more than 1,000. Let me tell you about some of the highlights. Now, there are many results out there online. You can find at cfosurvey.org, and I'm, I can only have time for the highlights here today. Outlook has improved in the United States relative to, say, six months ago, and actually improved a bit in Asia also. So those are the two better looking areas right now, um, a global economic outlook. In Europe and in Africa, things have got a little bit shaky, but Latin America really stands out as the place with the most significant downward trend right now. So in the US, we gave them a, the CFOs a list of maybe 20 different things they might be concerned about, and they can always write in uh, additional concerns we didn't think of. The top two were government policies and regulations. So the, the attitude right now in the, among U.S. CFOs seems to be, let's not mess this thing up. You know, it, it's, it's, a little, it's not a uniformly strong economy, but there's enough strength that things seem to be rather solidified. Now, each quarter we ask certain uh, questions that are quite topical. For example, we asked about the minimum wage this quarter, okay? And we asked, what if the minimum wage were to go up to $8.75 or $10 or $15? What would happen at your company you know, with hiring and other plans? So the, the, general, I, the general result here, the highlight, is that at $8.75, for the most part, companies could swallow that without much difficulty. If minimum wage goes up to $10 an hour, and certainly $15 an hour, then companies are going to start hiring less than they otherwise would have and shifting away from labor towards machinery. Now, that trend is already occurring, but if the minimum wage were to go up, it would accelerate. Because if you think about it, the types of jobs that most likely can be replaced by machinery are those lower wage jobs that the minimum wage would be designed to, to, to help. So there are some kind of negative offsetting consequences here that, that we can get some um, insight on based on the survey. We asked this the past quarter about the corporate tax system. And there, the bottom line is basically corporate tax system is broken and needs to be fixed. 13% of U.S. companies that responded to our survey said they've considered relocating headquarters overseas somewhere in order to save on corporate taxes. We've asked about, uh, recently about cash. Companies are accumulating a lot of cash. Are they ever going to start spending it? And if they do, what would they spend it on? And here it's a little mixed. About half of companies say, yes, we are get, you know, using our cash in what you might call a productive way, whereas other companies are still holding on, you know, keeping the dry powder, if you will, and wait, waiting and seeing where the economy is going. Those are some of the highlights. Um, we also ask questions uh, about how about capital spending or hiring? What percentage increase do you expect to increase your capital spending over the next year? So start with this 2.2% on the bottom. That's Latin American CFOs expect over the next 12 months for capital spending to increase by 2.2%, okay, on average, obviously. But that's less than inflation, right? So that's a very weak number. Just above that, we see Europe, 3.6%. And above, above Europe, we see um, North America, Africa, and Asia all up in the 7 to 8% range, which is a pretty healthy number. That's the expectation over the next 12 months for capital spending.